Hello, welcome back, all of you soul inspired beings out there. I'm Gina Levitum, soul inspired reflections, and I'm coming on as a continuation from the reading from yesterday, June 24th. Today is June 25th, at the time that this is recorded, and I'm going to do my best to get through this. Um, sometimes I just do better as the energy comes through, pull cards, and um, connect the dots for you with higher guidance. So part of my purpose and calling is to support you go through, navigate, and learn to skills to support you managing your energy and stepping into your self-mastery. Part of that where I've just developed more intuitive nature, intuitive and discerning energies and um and connection to life, really in connection to my I am presence and guides every day, um, a little bit more each day, and I learn more each day. Always learning, always learning. So remember that. So just to start off, you may hear a low hum in the background of a fan going on. I'm getting over clearing some congestion and getting over a cold and integrating some things in and, and through and out of the body that don't need to be there. So it's a 404 as I just looked at my phone, just that could be telling. I think of or like a square, it's very foundational. We'll talk a little bit about the cube today, but I wanted to start off, which I mentioned in the other video about 888, the number eight, Excuse me. The number eight, it's relation to, to your connection to power, your light body, solar flares, their integration of your I am presence. We may touch on the octahedron and the square and light codes. Recognizing that all sacred geometry holds a level of light codes within it. And some of you may be wondering, what do I mean by light codes? What do I mean by light codes? I mean by light codes. And let's go ahead and first, before we dive a little deeper, go ahead and ground your energy, opening up your earth star chakra, calling on Archangel Sandalphon to assist you to stay grounded in your being of light, your pillar of light, your essence here in this space, opening your heart center. That only divine light may enter your field, only your essence may enter your field and you trust and receive what serves your highest good today. <clears throat> Excuse me. We call on Archangel Metatron to assist in your stellar gateway. Opening your stellar gateway. And also completing your pillar of light. As you, those of you that listened to the video yesterday, we invoked that star of David, the disc, about three and a half feet below your feet at your Earth star. Visualize that expanding, that disc expanding out about four meters in circumference, diameter, excuse me, whichever the proper term is. And imagine that silvery pale light pillar of tube that you are creating is going up through your energetic system, your body, your nervous system, your chakras. And just visualizing that going all the way up to your star or excuse me, your um, stellar gateway. And when you take it there, I'm just going through it fairly quickly. You do it on your own time, your own pace. So if you need a little more time going through each energetic center, take that time. <clears throat> it's your field, learn to manage it, learn to clear it. These are part of your self-mastery, managing your energy. You can also begin to invoke the violet fire to blaze in through and around your tube of light to clear any energies into their highest form of light you know, that no longer serve you. Imagining that star of David coming up through, in, up through the column of light, drawing it up to the stellar gateway area, creating that other disc, giving me the same distance, about three and a half feet above your head, or 
<clears throat> the same size as the one that's at your birth star. Four meters in diameter. And just breathe, take three breaths here. And really feel your pillar lights being developed, strengthening. Like this platinum plan, platinum color. Those of you that work with the platinum ray, this platinum is highly protective, reflective. Violet ray is very transformative, transfiguring, purifying, cleansing. Purifying your centers, being ready just to receive what is ever what's going to come through for your highest good for all of us today during this reading. As we're all going through and feeling these levels of expansion and influx of light into the body. And what information is here for us today. As you continue your journey of awakening and evolving. And remembering that life is in constant motion and change, even when things appear still. When I say appear still, because energy is always moving. You are always moving. Your body is always moving. Your soul is always working. Always working. It's energy. It's energy. Let's go ahead and do three ohms together. And also invite the violet fire to clear the space. Normally I'll sage or something, but we're going to invoke the violet fire because it's hot and I don't care to breathe in the smoke right now. So we're going to invoke that violet fire to blaze in and through and around this energetic space in this container for all those that are receiving this information. At whatever time you receive this information, it's perfectly fine. Yeah. <clears throat> And the space will always be cleared and held in that container of love and divine lights. Follow upon the violet fire to blaze in through and around the space, consuming any energy into its highest form of light now. Consuming all energy. I now invoke violet flame to blaze in through and around this space, consuming all energy <coughs> and transforming it into its highest form of light now. You can even do that for your body. I now blaze, I now call upon the violet fire to blaze in through and around my body, consuming any energy that no longer serves my highest good into love and light now. And breathe it in and out. You may feel your body oscillate. That's perfectly normal and fine. Continue to breathe in your golden light and the violet fire as you do so. You're breathing in the golden light as the violet fire simultaneously is <clears throat> transforming all energy that no longer serves you into the highest form of light. Making room for your I am presence and the golden light of God that you are connected to to enter those spaces. So this is part of expansion as you release and receive and transmit and receive. You make room for your higher self. You make room for higher consciousness. You make room for the new, as we spoke about yesterday, a new dawn, a new day, a new way of being. Let that light in. Let the intelligence of your I am presence and the Godhead come into your body, into your cells, activating the cells and the seed light that's already within you, your divine spark. And that energy will find its natural place. You do not have to effort it. You do not have to direct it. Your body knows exactly where to take it at this present moment in time. Beautiful, beautiful. So thank you again for joining me. Be sure to like and subscribe. If you find any of this information supportive, helpful, or even reflective, or it brings in questions like insight, 
right? We don't have to agree with everything. I'm not here to convince you of anything, just to support you along your way. Take what you need, leave the rest. You'll receive exactly what you're meant to receive at this time. And maybe you visit it again and you see something else. It comes across and it lands in your heart and you're like, oh yes, I'm, I'm ready to receive that information now. Perfectly fine. <clears throat> we're not meant to receive everything all at once. We receive exactly what we're meant to at the time in the moment, the eternal moment of now. And yes, you're seeing me wear two <laughs> lenses. And this also may be symbolic. I've been having some, I need to update my um, prescription or my glasses. So <clears throat> this may be symbolic that we are multidimensional beings. And some of you are navigating, what does that mean to be multidimensional? Some of you may be trying to jump into that with, with um, little foundation of, this awakening process under your belt, so to speak, or in your tool belt. And so to try to mentally grasp multidimensionality can be challenging, let alone feeling the, through the emotional body, which as we're expanding our heart and the heart is continuing to open, can um, be have the potential to be overwhelming without the, the availability of tools of grounding and alchemy and things of that nature. Even the breath. The breath is one of your most powerful and accessible tools you have every day to assist in calming your nervous system. Your That's your communication centers, your energetic centers, your neurological pathways and through the spinal system, spinal column, the nervous system and the brain and the brain stem. All those things work together. Your chakra system, their energetic wheels or vortexes right working as one unit it's really really one chakra but it's gotten laid out through the body but when we condense as we spoke about yesterday we're condensing down into the body into form our i am presence is condensing down not losing power don't don't get me wrong so we're making room in the physical body through cellular release molecular release releasing for really lack of a better word, I don't really care to use trauma as a word anymore. Um, we're just letting go of our old ways, our programming that no longer serves us anymore. And learning how to detach from that, letting go of the identity we carry with our past experiences. And that makes room for new information and codes to come in, your I am presence to come in in this energy that is in us and outside of us as part of the universe and inside of us all at the same time to come into embodiment through the physical body into form into this world of form and creation the material world of form okay and just know energy can take on any form and structure okay just think about your own body. You have the power to change your body. Yes. I hope all of you are nodding. Yes. You have the power to change your mental state, how you approach things, your emotional state. Yes. Yes, you do. That would mean to me, you are not those things, but you have the power to create from those experiences, feelings, sensations, right? You want your body to look a certain way. We'll just keep it kind of on the superficial layer, right? Maybe you want to build more strength and muscle tone. So you may start to exercise and do different types of exercise that build endurance, but also build strength and muscle, right? And you may seek a mentor to support you because there are ways to do it more appropriately and safely for your body to meet your goal and to support your wellness. So how might you also look at the energetic tools that some people will call spiritual tools? They're human tools. They're light being tools because you are a being of light and energy. They're tools of light. They're tools of self-mastery, energy management. How might you work with the violet fire, your light body, your Merkaba, which once you get that balanced, it becomes a sphere and moves very, very fast. So before we go in deeper into that thread that had just come through, and I just want to call on Mark, 
Archangel Metatron's energy a little bit more here and invoke his energy because he governs the ascension process. And many of us are connecting with the angelic realm that lives within you. All these codes are within you. You are not separate from the angelic realm. So you ask for guidance along your way. As you learn, you're not giving up power to these realms. You're bringing in your higher self, your personal power, your sovereignty. You're stepping into codes of power. Okay, and that kind of brings us to the number eight. And I kept hearing it as eight, eight, eight in my dreams a few days ago. So before I read an article that I found on the number eight that seemed very appropriate, I'm going to read. I have this lovely deck that was gifted to me by a dear friend. And it's the Herbal Astrologer Oracle Deck. Okay, by Andriana Ayalis. Artwork by Josephine Clerks. And it's beautiful. It's a beautiful deck. And in the inside cover of the box, it says, you are medicine. And you are. Everyone comes here with medicine. You are medicine. So as I read this, I like to say it in the first person. And I say, I am medicine. I am medicine. I am medicine. Thank you. I'm being reminded to, for us to do our ohms together. I'll hold up the symbol because we're very much being called to work with sound and vibration frequency. And that's also our voice. Here's the symbol of ohm. You can, you can take it into the void if you'd like. Oh. Allow that to anchor in through the body and into the core of the earth, into your heart. Oh. Bringing it down and through the crown and to the heart center. And you can feel it emanating out up to the heart. You'll just throw it chakra. The body will. Oh. Feel that radiate through the chest, opening your heart, anchoring your body as you connect to the sound of creation, connecting to the creator that you are and your divine connection to source, God, Father, Mother, God, Supreme Being, whatever words you want to use for it, the sun, the golden sun, And feel it inside you. And we'll read the number eight card from this beautiful deck called Bobby, Bobby, Bobby and Son. Trust. Bobby and Son. Trust. So many of us are being asked to trust in ways so much deeper than ever before as you come in to alignment more and more each day there are less choices which is actually a beautiful thing when you're in alignment the choices become more and more clear there's less doubt there's just knowing and guidance and going i'm doing this way and the rest will follow then the things you need with that choice will come in as you choose. The path appears. Life does become more simple. And this kind of comes into that overconsumption that we spoke about yesterday. 
And it, I was reminded too of my trip to Sri Lanka a number of years ago, and then returning back to the United States. And I was overwhelmed with choices that I had when I was in the store. Like wherever I traveled in Sri Lanka, it was the same items everywhere I went. There were some differences depending on the region, but not much. It was all staples, everything, you know, just what you needed. I came back to the United States and it was shelf after shelf after shelf looking at like what felt like a hundred different choices for boxes of cereal, right? That's very overwhelming and stimulating. It can be very confusing, right? You're the cup run over as we talked about. Uh, we're, um, we're talking about also over materialization, over consumption, right? So what's happening within you if you're over consuming anything, right? Even if it's spiritual text, you're not giving your space to digest. You're not giving your space to have the cellular memory, the body catch up or even put into practice some of the teachings that you're coming across. This is where foundational things are. I'll give yourself the space to put into practice, even if it's just breathing. Pick one thing and allow yourself to get comfortable with it. Be a beginner's mindset with it and practice each day. And then you become that intermediate and then you become the master. Because then it's just in yourselves. It's muscle memory, right? You can make room to add steps along the way, okay? So trust, you're exactly where you need to be. There's no rush in getting anywhere. You're right where you need to be. Slow down because you're connecting to power. As you're ascending and going into alignment with your higher self, and your monadic presence, you are connecting to power, your inner power, your personal power, your direct connection, your intuitive centers, okay, that run along your spinal column to the Godhead. There's no rush to get there. If you think of it like a ladder or a line, right, you must be at certain levels of frequencies to receive more power, right? It's like a gauge of wire, right? But uh, if I have a 240 voltage, I'm not gonna use a 110 plug, right? <laughs> I'm gonna, I can't use the 110 plug if I need a 240, right? So I need to upgrade my system for connection. So using your spiritual practices, invoking the violet fire, your daily connection with your I am presence and higher self, and shedding, shedding the, the shadow aspects of yourself, or really the energies of yourself that you no longer need, that no longer serve you, the belief systems that are limiting you, the the past that you keep living and repeating over and over, that you're if you're ready to let them go, then let them go and surrender and you ask for guidance you ask god to help you surrender this if you're challenged help me release my resistance to this energy that i'm holding on to so that i might be in flow of my own divinity and energy so i could be in the figure eight it's constant current of infinite energy right that infinity symbol so take a look at this image it's very beautiful so much is happening in it. So much is happening. Trust. Trust you're exactly where you need to be. You're exactly where you're meant to be. You're right on time. Right on time. So much wisdom in this card. So we're going to read the card before we go into this a little further. But there's a lot of ancestral pieces in here. You see that. We'll read it first. 
All right. And this deck does have, I believe, a reverse aspect. So I will read both because all of us are in different stages. And it's important, I find, sometimes to know the reverse because we can reflect on that if it's necessary. Go, ah, it can bring a contrast and some insight. Babinsana, trust. Kaliandra and Angustifolia. So remember, this is an herbal astrology deck. So excuse me if I mispronounce some of the, the language. So they're referring to the flower. And excuse me, as I've cleared my sinuses, I know that is not very flattering. So upright, this card of Bhavansana. Trust is self-love, heart retrieval, ultimate state of receivership, Gratitude, receptivity, and compassion. Reversed the separation, grief, broken heart, lack of self worth, unable to receive love and sadness. The astrological ruler is the moon and Neptune, which you see those symbols in the card up on top. In the Shabibo tradition, Babinsana is a highly respected master teacher that contains a plethora of medicinal benefits for the body, mind, and spirit. Native to the Amazon basin, many call the herb Serenita or mermaid. Beautiful paintings found in the Amazon among shamans depict her as a goddess, a deeply creative feminine spirit who has masterful healing abilities. Serenita de los Rios assists us in healing wounds of the heart, past relationships, grief, loss, sadness, abuse, and melancholy. Avinsana is often prescribed by a curandero or healer to heal wounds from childhood, for soul retrieval or to heal stunted or soul or susto that left fragments of itself in painful past, susto, fragments of the self. Whether used as a single plant during specific shamanic cleanses or dietas for purification and spiritual awakening or brewed as tea, Babansana assists in deeply amplifying heart energy to experience the transcendent power of love, empathy, compassion, oneness, and freedom from pain. So they're referring to dietas. You must remember herbal, it's plant medicine. We, everything is medicine. Your food that you eat is medicine. So when you when you think about what you're consuming, what medicine are you feeding the body? Are you consuming for your mind, body, spirit? Because it will affect, as you know, or perhaps maybe you aren't aware, the way we eat affects our moods and our entire system, our mind, body, and spirit. Okay. The way our food has been engineered actually can close down your pineal gland and calcify it. So it's important to do things and practices and eating and nourishing the body with clean, healthy foods as possible. If your pineal gland is calcified, meditation can also assist in decalcifying as you're bringing in and opening the gateway for your I am presence to come in and condense down into physical form while at the same time you're creating space in the body, cellularly, energetically to receive your higher self, to embody your higher self. So you notice how it's both and, okay? And it's this heart opening, right? It's the heart opening that is highly necessary. So Papansana is coming to us to assist us in this level of heart opening, a heart awakening, expansion, staying rooted in and grounded in love and nurturing. So your energy can flow with ease and grace while you're navigating this time. Right? And it'll, she'll amplify that heart energy. Okay. Amazana assists in deeply amplifying heart energy to experience transcendent power of love, empathy, compassion, oneness, freedom from pain. 
So we have that freedom card from yesterday as well. Oh, the codependency, which was the key to freedom. You moving away from codependency, you're moving into your personal power, God, sovereign, and free freedom. You have the keys. This help, your heart opening helps you forge your own keys to unlock your unlock the things that are holding you back. Set yourself free. You're the only one that can set yourself free. No one else can do that for you. Only you. You are also the only one that imprisons yourself. Okay. I know that might be hard for some of you to hear right now, but you have free will and choice. You must step through your fears, through your shadows, and trust. Babasana also grants the powers of expansive intuition and lucid dreaming. Many users, when ingesting Babansana through dietas or alongside other ceremonial gurus, experience time differently, as if the barriers between waking life and dreaming get washed away. It is said that this transcendent experiences of love beyond space and time are, the, are what allows for miraculous heart healing. The guidance of Babansana. Babansana's bright and pink flowers bathe the energy body with the softness of light, awakening the inner pathways to unconditional self-love. Babansana reminds us that love is the highest state of receivership, reminding us not to forget the necessary power of self-love. Babansana assists us in rediscovering forgotten places within ourselves, retrieving fragments of our hearts, seeking healing. Asking yourself, where in my heart's memory can I bring fullness? Avansana medicine is like that of whales and human, or excuse me, and hummingbirds, the joyous record keepers of the sacred that assist us in, in accessing the reservoirs of the cosmic heart. Okay, accessing the reservoirs of the cosmic heart. So for those of you that listened to yesterday's channel, we... Uh, touched on the, the cosmic mirror, the dodecahedron, the cosmos. We are connecting to the cosmic heart, your heart to the cosmos, the cosmic heart. Bringing that energy in. Okay. Saranita is reminding you to pay close attention to the messages encoded in dreams, synchronicities and symbols around that surround you right now. Through those doorways, you can further explore the great mystery of your heart's desire. Okay, it's a really beautiful time. And so we'll take a, just a closer look at this card because it's touching on ancestral ways, which will come back to the cube. The cube will take us into some ancestral uh, remembering the ancestral wisdom that will support you in these times. Okay, that's part of your tool belts, the nature connection, the connecting to spirit, the, the, the sacredness, the ritual practices. As your DNA is being upgraded, your 12 dimensional strand, 144. And the cosmic whales that surround the earth and move energy, not just in the through the oceans of the planet, but also in the higher realms. So some of you may be called to maybe listen to uh, whale sounds and music. Okay. Letting go of the any sense of time by being in the eternal moment of now, because everything's accelerating. So the sense of time is different. Some of you may have noticed solstice was earlier than what we've been accustomed to because also our astrology is changing as the planet is moving faster and the solar system universe is moving faster. When you're ascending, you can move faster. You have less density. So you yourself can operate faster more clearly because you have less density and less interference. 
while still being very still and calm and present. Okay, so pay attention when you have moments of when you're feeling anxious or anxiety, come back to the present moment and the stillness and connect. Connect to your joy, connect to your presence. Your higher presence is always in joy. Your higher self, your true essence is always in joy, even, no matter what you're experiencing. So even as it reminds me, as I saw friends and I know I had a lot going on and they're just like, oh, I never would have known it. You feel so joyful. And then I thought, you know what? I am because I am. I'm happy. Yeah, things are challenging, have been challenging. And then I'm physically not feeling well, but I'm happy. The core of me is happy and there's light. Okay. I'm not leading my life with all these like... Uh, uh, it's the difference in those that are perhaps still in that lower vibrational state of the victim mentality or archetype, right? Versus someone that has gone a little further in their journey and they have the self-awareness of, of their inner state of being and, and what's happening internally. And then they're practicing their tools of like, oh, everything, you know, I'm okay. At the core of me, I am okay. I will get through this and do what needs to be done and what is necessary. Okay, so it's a different way of being. You become more grounded as so many of you are seeking to, gosh, how do I stay or return to a grounded state or equilibrium balance? Part of that number eight is balance. Energy moving in a balanced way, that infinite and balanced way. Okay, so a lot of balance coming in and symmetry. Also, your masculine and feminine energies, because your creative energies are coming in more heightened. And you must balance your masculine and feminine energies. So remember, everyone's at different stages of their involution and evolution. Okay? So just know, don't compare yourself to others. There's, yes, that sometimes we may have mentors or people that were like, hey, that they're doing something over there that I'd like to get to that point. Totally fine to have people inspire you, but be where you are and take the steps necessary that are for, right for you, right? And not to be in a hurry to skip steps or have it all, right? Because it's all there inside you anyway. You will unlock the keys as your vibration and frequency allows you to okay and it'll support the way you create and bring into form Let's see what else do they want me to say right now <laughs> okay we're gonna read the article um i will leave links to the these articles in the description Let me see which one they want me to read first. Eight. Okay, so we're going to read the decoding. It's called Decoding the Spiritual Meaning of 8888, and then 888, and then 88, and 8. So it's sometimes when we see numbers in sequences, some they have more amplification. Okay, so I don't believe I'm going to read this entire article. I'm just going to jump to certain sections, skim it. So this is called Decoding the Spiritual Meaning of 8888, 888, 88, and 8. This was um, an article that was written in August 23 of 2020 by Moon Omens. Um, their website is www.moonomens.com. You can find this article there, and I will, again, leave the link in the description. Um, it, they're going to see. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay. Let's see. In this article, we're going to decode spiritual meaning of the number eight in its sequence, 88, 888, and 8888. In previous article, we decoded number seven. If you have not... We invite you to read it. So on your own, those of you listening, read article seven or read the article about the number seven. 
uh, follow the inherent spiritual following the inherent spiritual understanding of how the universe is connected and operates through the number seven. The number eight creates mathematical, logical representation of the spiritual world that can take shape in 3D material plane. The number eight is the manifestation of time into space. So here in this card, what do we have? We have time on the chest. And it's kind of over the heart where people would depict the hearts kind of off to the left side. It's our creative side. It's our divine feminine side. Um, right? It's the right brain connected to the right hemisphere of the brain. And look at all that energy coming in. And it's that violet. It's like a violet energy coming in with gold around it. Right? So we're in this place of creation. And before, right, what I was talking about was materialism and overconsumption, right? So what if we cleared our plates, minimized ourselves, so we could see clearly as we bring in new form, the material world, right? Things into form, um, right? So consider that for a moment, just in the back of your mind, a different relationship with the material world as many people are starting to really declutter their inner state of being and their external state of being. Um, they're decluttering what they're consuming, um, not just not just food, but material, being more purposeful and mindful on what they read, what they're watching, what they're listening to. And, and it doesn't mean you're not paying attention to what's happening in the world. It just means you're not over consuming. It's balance, right? Back into balance. Number eight, balance and synchronous symmetry. Okay. So remember that material because we're bringing, we're creating, we're creator. We're, we're remembering to be master creators. You are the creator. You're bringing things into form, life, into, into life, into form. Okay. And so this, remember, the figure eight is also infinity symbol. It can be depicted as a symbol referred to the yin and yang, right? Sacred geometry is very powerful tools in your natural design natural way to communicate through energy and communication. It's a very much a part of our communication. Um, it's very symbolic, even within our chakra system and third eye centers, okay? Eight has much more freedom to create in the material reality than the initial material structure of the number four, okay? Right, we were kind of touched on the number four really briefly, because as I looked at my phone, it was 404 when I kind of started talking. So, and that's the kind of foundational. So 404 brought us to another eight. So many of us, or there's the potential or the, the opportunity as one grows to begin to be more in aligned in frequency and vibration to work more with the energies of the number eight and your ability to materialize, to create into form, into realities. Okay, that being said, it is so important that you are of integrity and of pure of heart as you do this, as you learn to master your skill sets and energies and powers, because it is the powers. We all have powers. Our thoughts are very powerful. Our writing, our word is very powerful. The number eight numerology indicates the strength of will that also when I think of will, I think of our voice, it's chakra, divine will. So where are you in the power and the strength of your divinity, your divine will? Are you stepping further into that? Number eight is also part of stepping into your personal power. Okay. That takes a lot of integrity to be in your personal power. It's not about power over one. It's not about power over another person. It's your own power. That means you have discernment. You have the ability to choose. Um, 
you're not you're you're working through any fears that may come up for you and you're okay with that you know how to navigate it you're you're stepping into personal power right and i just watched an instagram post saying what was it jo jomo something like that and it was something to the effect of um not they weren't feeling left out by choosing to do something for themselves while others people and friends were doing other things right that's your personal power right there say no to your friends so you can go do something fun for yourself because that's what you needed the most and being okay with it your friends are okay with it and they see you later right it's not nothing's personal you don't lose your friends over taking time for yourself everyone is it's all good right and um that's an example of personal power. It's choice. It's self-care, nurturing, loving, right? Love and sauna. Where are you loving yourself? Self-love. And it's not out of being selfish. It's out of genuine purity and care of your body, being, mind, and spirit. Okay? This is where it can be very organic. Eight is karmic number that seeks balance is symbolized by its symmetry. The lessons of this energy are teaching you that you must... Use your personal power, which often manifests through your ego, okay? And I'll say the lower, <laughs> excuse me, I'll call it the lower ego, just for understandings. And then we can raise that vibration and frequency into our higher, our higher way, our higher place, okay? So in order to create the callings of your soul, right? So you're moving from... Excuse me. from your spirit your heart your divine self moving you forward and making your choices versus the lower ego driving your choices or old programming insecurities emotional behaviors or self-serving things okay so hopefully that makes sense to you you're becoming more aware more discerning on what is driving your choice is it a pure intent is it aligned your body, the more you're aligned with your higher self, your body's going to, you'll feel it. You'll feel like, oh no, that's not quite a hundred percent. But it's not a hundred percent. I don't know if I'm going to make that choice, right? Because if it's a hundred percent, I don't have to think about it. I know it. I feel it. I do. it, And then the rest follows. Okay. So pay attention to how your mind may be going back and forth. Your ego, is it interfering with your divine choice your higher choice your higher way of creating okay the energy of the number eight will show you where your spiritual imbalance is in order to help your soul grow to the spirit driven up rather than the ego driven okay so this is where many of us are moving toward right this new dawn this new energy that is coming in there our spiritual balance the balance of heaven and earth, as above, so below. The balance within yourself, masculine and feminine, your heart opening, your emotional, mental body, the balance of your endocrine system and your actual, the hormones, the balance of your energies, your state of being, your groundedness, your equilibrium. right? The balance of fun and play and study and meditation of your practices. To have joy and experience life. Balance, right? We hear people, I need a life work balance. They're seeking it. They're starved for it because internally they know they've been operating out of balance. You've been operating out of balance. I've been operating on balance. And now when we come back to balance, how good does that feel? And you know, the more you are in balance and harmony and synchronicity, the quicker you know when you are out. The quicker you can bring yourself back to equilibrium. And as the natural chaos of the world, that divine feminine energy that can appear chaotic, comes in it has its divine purpose when you're in harmony with that energy you're not affected by it because you are working with this divine energy 
of the masculine and feminine energy that you are become this foundation that it becomes untouched by the chaos of the world because you are free in your heart and in your spirit and trust trust and love and make the necessary choices as you navigate as you navigate this new way of being and recognize this the older world is going through a deconstruction as the new world is taking shape foundation cube energy coming in. new foundations new structure new way of being new consciousness coming in that we we had forgotten that it's being ignited within you okay because you hold the keys that you're at a certain frequency and vibration that opens up it unlocks that portal of energy no longer you're becoming more aware if you're forcing your own will onto others that's the ego driven way of manifesting so many people are experiencing they're like they're having trouble manifesting and this underlying energy of the ego i feel and have felt into is one of the key components and i was trying to explain this to a friend of mine recently right and i couldn't find the word to bridge to bridge the gap for the understanding But when you're forcing your will onto other people, we're no longer doing that. We're moving away from that way of being. We do not force our will onto others. We're in this place of, of really learning how to appreciate the differences. And it's okay that we can see things differently. I have multiple lenses on. How symbolic is that? I have multiple lenses, so I can see at a distance, I can see up close, and then I can see kind of in the middle, right? Because we have multiple lenses. We're a multifaceted being with many perspectives, many perceptions. Right? But to allow the illusions to fall away and to recognize if I'm seeing this angle, that's only part of the story. It's only part of the image, right? But if I come around the side, oh, there's another angle. There's another perspective. And that makes the whole the whole thing or all the perspectives. And you look at a crystal, right? It has many, let's see, I usually have some around. <laughs> I have this beautiful smoky quartz here. I have the amethyst too, but it's too big for me to pick up right now. We see all the different angles, the facets, shapes. But as I turn it, it looks different each time. Each time. The side I'm looking at has more ridges. We can turn it and look from the underside. Right? It looks the same piece, but different different wisdom, different information, different insight. And all has value. It all has value. So whatever the stone speaks to you in this moment, it might give me a different message. And that's perfectly fine. We are all in our unique light while connected to the whole, to the same source, from God. So appreciate each other's uniqueness. You do not have to agree. And that's okay. But you do not have to argue. You just go, oh, yeah, okay. Thank you for sharing. Smile. So for those recognizing they have been potentially manifesting through the lower ego, it disconnects you from spirit. Those of you really feeling this acceleration, going, wow, man of creating and manifesting is happening really fast. You're becoming more connected to spirit than ever. And you have to, all of us, step into more purposeful and mindful thoughts 
and what we're asking and working with the universe because the universe will respond. We talked about that yesterday. It's going to respond. And if you bring in the negative or the doubt, it's going to cancel out your original affirmation or request or command. And it'll give you the the, the last thing, you the, the negative, the doubt piece, right? So be purposeful, Be repeat the positive affirmation and really believe it and feel it. It's not just believing it here. It's feeling it through the body, seeing it through your mind's eye, tasting it almost on your tongue and you're tasting it and feel it in your hands. Like bring it light through your vision and the universe will then puts it into motion and it brings it to you. Just be open to how it comes and shows up. You, you have to let go of any outcome of, of the way you want it to be, okay? Because the universe will bring it to you. In numerology, the number eight calls you to achieve both spiritual and material wealth, both spiritual and material wealth through spiritual creation, spiritual creation, energetics of spirit, devotion okay which honors the freedom of all things your connection to all life okay so be mindful of how you relate to material wealth and maybe on your own take some time on what comes up for you and be in the truth of it what comes up for you when you think of material wealth because my response to that may be different than yours be mindful and aware if you're, as you're writing things down, is it actually an overconsumption potentially? Is it just about things? You know, kind of, I'm picturing that um, Garfield, those of you that grew up in the eighties, when he's sitting on a pile of toys, he with the most toys wins. Are you still under that construct, that, that program? Or has your material wealth relationship to that changed? Right, because creating and bringing things into form, to me, material is bringing things into form, right? And it may serve us to perhaps break down the etymology of the word material. So I'm hearing Metatron going, let's look at that up. the root word i find the root words very interesting now and to look take time to look up the definitions and its origin and that the way words and language is used you may find it very helpful so wood material substance um from matter or mother right mother huh mother and look at this this has a very mother-like quality to it, very earth, fertile, growth, ancient, right? The mother, substance, material. In what ways, in what ways are you connected? In what ways are you connecting to that material world, the mother, the mother, the earth. What ways are you connecting? Are you paying attention to that as you're in this energy of all that is, this current that constantly exists going vertical as above, so below, the heavens on earth, you as a conduit to bring energy and assist in the earth rising. Because you too are part of the earth and you too are rising from within and purifying and evolving and bringing in your highest light available to you. And how might you 
create with that energy, with that maternal energy, right? That feminine, divine feminine is highly creative energy. How are you creating with the consciousness of the planet? She lives and breathes her own consciousness. How do you live and breathe with her in synchronicity, in unison, in a pulsation of light and energy? Are you listening? Are you honoring it in the sacredness of this land that you walk on, the sacredness of yourself, that you are this body, a temple for your spirit to maneuver, for God to work through you and this body, this vehicle to experience life? And this moves us into 88 pattern, the material and spiritual abundance. The number 88 is a sign that you are meant to be a leader and will naturally attract opportunities for great wealth and abundance into your life. And again, that may be different for each of you, but finances are part of our abundance. It's part of wealth, okay? Loving people in our life, roof over our head, sustainability, our strong foundation, our basic needs. That's part of our abundance in life. Friends, family, food, joy, resources, right? And that may look different for each of you, okay? Depending on where you live, where you come from, uh, okay? The universe is inviting you to show others how to create prosperity in their life by making spirit. Spirit is the foundation, okay? You're opening your heart and you're moving. Remember, we're letting go of the ego leading you, the lower ego moving into your heart connection, your intuitive guidance, your higher self, your spirit is guiding you along the way. It's a very different way to live. Some of us are getting a lot more used to it and it becomes more at ease. Others are very much stuck in the mental body, very much stuck in the emotional body and analyzing every little thing, which could... It's very exhausting, to tell you the truth, at least in, from what I witness and have experienced from others, where I'm just like, I'm not, I cannot answer your questions. Simon. Right. You can hold space for them. Give them tools. But I'm watching the boom, 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 back and forth, right? The back and forth, mental to heart, mental to heart, because there, there's resistance and fears moving into the emotional body and relating to the emotions and mm -hmm. in a very different way and truly letting go, right? Because it's hard to let go of what we know because that's comfortable, even when it's uncomfortable and we know we need to let something go, like a relationship, and we stay in it longer than need to. Imagine if we did it. Imagine if we listened to the yellow flags a lot sooner before they became red ones, Right? You'd save everyone, yourself and your and the partner, person you're seeing a, a lot of a lot of grief, <laughs> a lot of stress, right? But there's learning in all of it. Okay, it all has purpose. But spirit is becoming your foundation. Your I am presence, your heart is becoming the foundation to how you create. Working with the eighty-eight, how you become your inner leader. Your inner shaman. Okay, as some might say in my past teachings, we all have an inner shaman. Your heart, your guide. And I'm not talking about talking to guides or anything. I'm talking about you connecting to your higher self. You. You take the steps in your life. And of course, seek out mentorship when needed as necessary, as learning anything you do. You're becoming a leader in your life. And the way you lead your life will inspire others, whether it is known to you or not, and you impact the world around you. Spirit and matter are not separate. They work in conjunction with each other. It's energy. You do not have matter without energy. Spirits is energy. 
working with the number 88 will support you in mastering that. Because remember, we're bringing our I am presence into the physical world of form. Your Christ consciousness, your Christo Sophia self into the world of form through the body. Through the vehicle of the body, through the Merkabah. This is where your light body, the Merkabah, is so important. The heart opening. You cannot activate without the heart opening. Other people, let's see. So what this is going to support you is this balance. Again, we're back to balance in your successes, your spiritual success, your material success. So basically, your heaven and earth being successful in both realms. In one. What is in one is in the, is in the whole. As above and so below. So if you're seeing, as you're connecting, some of you know how to do this already, where you go into meditation and you connect in the higher realm of yourself and you see the success and you get that blueprint down and you bring it in through the body and then you manifest it and create it in the physical world into reality. You're mastering how to do that in a way that is highly, highly um, filled with integrity and sacredness and honor. as your um, spiritual foundation strengthens. You're learning how it all works together. You're trusting. You're trusting the ancient wisdom in the higher realm that lives within you. It all lives within you. There's no place to go, but this is where you go inward to connect and bring in that information and insight, be inspired by you through your higher self, your spirit, your spirit, your your direct connection to power, personal power. So bringing us to 888, master of personal power. This is where many of us, not all, where many of us are on this track, but are at different levels at the, on the track or path, okay? And it's perfectly fine. I encourage you just to pay attention to where you may be on this and just be right where you are and know you'll get to other places. And it's actually, some of these things and many of them, they're happening simultaneously working together. But as you know, the human mind can only kind of grasp one concept at a time. But in the in the, your soul, your I am presence, your multi-dimensional self is retaining all of this information. It already exists there, okay? Because you, your higher self, already exists. You're just bringing it into the physical. So 888 is a sign of mastery of your personal power. You're taking on new levels of leadership because you've discovered how to balance your drive for achievement with the good of others. That is very important, right? It's not just self-serving. It's for the higher good of all. Higher good of all. It's kind of that middle way of the violet flame, right? The, the middle way. Isn't that also Buddhist teachings, if I'm not mistaken, the middle way? Leading others is a special spiritual path. So be mindful on how you're holding that word, leading others. Because by you just leading your life in this way, you're going to impact so many people around you, whether you know it or not. You have children. You're influencing your children. You have friends. Your coworkers. People will silently watch you. And you may hear them respond to you or you may not. I know oftentimes whenever I've left careers, that's when I hear people, um, how I've impacted their life. It's not the time during I'm spending with them. 
I usually hear it later or when they've retired or or bad at work function when it, it's a little more relaxed and then people share. And I think one of the things that have stuck with me and has always, and there's also been a challenge, but someone commented how much integrity I held and have and do hold. And it's been a challenge because when I know something is out of lax integrity, it's like, a, it used to be like a gut punch, right? Where I'm just like, no, what you're doing with lax integrity. But that, that sensation has since calmed. I don't have the same visceral response, but I know when something lacks integrity. And that it was a, a very nice thing to hear because all the careers I had, I have to have the ability to say no, even to the highest figure within the department because of the, the content that I was hired to be a record keeper of. Your spiritual path is no different. You must hold that with the utmost integrity. And it goes back to that saying of chop wood, carry water, right? Just because you have powers and abilities, which we all do, and we're all strengthening in them in different ways, doesn't mean you misuse them. You know when to use them and you know how to use them. They work all these energies and frequencies and colors, vibrations. They work together. And your divine will, the power to speak through let the divine speak through you, your communication, your thoughts. Those are all must be in line with integrity. And this is all of us working on this, myself included. The more you do your daily practices, the more this becomes easier, easier, easier. Because you're reinforcing that neuro network, the neurons, the transmissions. You're literally supporting the rewiring of your brain. You're supporting the integration of your I am presence into form, into creation, into the physical body, into embodiment. When you do these practices, you're building your spiritual foundation. When you take time for this, and to meditate and to be in these energies that move within you, that want to be expressed. Your spirit wants to take the wheel. It's for you to allow it to occur and let go of the identity of your identity in the way that you know it. Let go of your persona. It only gets in your way. Seeing the number 888 is your chance to examine how you are using your personal power in regards to others. The universe is calling for you to use your authenticity. You uncover your own shadow aspects, you bring, meaning you bring light to them. You strengthen your abilities and your leadership qualities. Because even if you think you're not a leader, you are. You are a leader. How do you lead your life? Or are you letting someone else lead it? Okay. And then if you're letting someone else lead, that means you're not taking accountability or responsibility for your life. Self-mastery requires you to take accountability and responsibility for your life and make changes. Those are not always easy. Create new boundaries. Boundaries have to be respected and readjusted all the time. <laughs> take time for reflection. Right? Before you make a choice, take time for reflection. If Pay attention of what's driving that choice, right? Is it the ego or is it spirit? Is it fair or unjust? Is it just because you can, because it's within your authority to do so? Or, or is it something that you're like, oh, you know what? It's not the, it's not the highest choice for everybody. There's another way. So be in your personal power because there's always power to choose and the way you implement something. Just like I've mentioned in the past, I used to enforce code, city ordinances, and penal codes. 
but there's also discernment and discretion in applying those guidelines, those codes. Okay, so that is also here, right? We can all see that in our work. There's applications, there's time and place. We can choose something different. So as you work with the energy of 888, it brings in that power of that higher consciousness that you're operating from to come in as you make choices and create from spirit rather than ego, to lower ego. The 888 invites you to create your own method of leadership. Now, this is very important because you're creating the new, right? You're creating the new energy, the new consciousness that's coming in. So this is why what pe when people are bringing in information, it's so important whether you agree with what they're bringing in or not. It's it's something that's an aspect that's coming through, through the, they're connecting to perhaps the void where you know everything exists and we're bringing in this new dawn energy. I'm not upside down. I can't tell. Oh, there we go. That new dawn energy. We're moving away from codependency and being able to lead our lives. God sovereign and free. in harmony within the self so we can be in harmony with others, with mind. So now I'm gonna move in a little bit of a segue here, a little bit about the Merkaba. Um, let's see. Mm -hmm. I'm going to miss something. Oh, my God. Ah, no, here. There's something about the stages of the Merkaba that seems important. So for those of you who aren't familiar with just the breakdown of the word, Merkaba, M-E-R-K-A-B-A. -A. So Mer. You break it down, mer is light, ha is spirit, ba is body. So when we speak of ka, spirit, light, okay, the body is holding the spirit. It's we're a vehicle of light, merkaba. It's Hebrew, it has Egyptian origins. It can be referred to as the chariot of light, okay? It helps us uh, bring in, again, the cosmic energies that govern the world, really the cosmos, which also govern the you, universal laws. So this gives you a little bit of background on how is our light body being affected, right? It's part of our connection to power. This is why I'm bringing up the Merkaba, the light body, okay? Now you, you can spend a lifetime studying the Merkaba and doing Merkaba work. It's a very powerful tool to learn to work with. Some of you may be drawn to that. Some of you may not be. You don't have to learn all these things. Go to what you're drawn to and you'll know what's right for you. I've been drawn to many things and I do Merkaba work and I also do shamanic work. And I also recognized the importance of the, the, the core teachings of it. And I do light work, universal rays, and crystal work, and things of that nature. So it all works together. And there's some people I've met, they don't do any of that. They're like, what are you talking about? But they're going through the same experience. Their heart is opening, they're changing their life. The way they're walking through life is to trust, to love. Okay. So it comes to each of you in different ways. So this is why I really encourage you to not hold on so tightly to one way over identifying with anything. I do shamanic work, I do light work. It's all energy. 
at the end of it, how is your heart? Are you operating from your heart? Are you in harmony with life and with living and with your spirit? Because it'll it'll show. You'll see it. It's not about what you eat or don't. Are you happy? What is driving you? Right? My friend Claire and I, when we see each other, we love to go eat. And then we're like, oh, I kind of uh, had a little too much sugar. But we laugh about it. And we have fun. And then we just don't repeat it days in a row. We spend days inside. <laughs> <laughs> because we know that our body's going to like all oh, overload on all that goodness, but we're having fun, right? We're here to enjoy life, but also do our responsibilities as well as being guests on this planet. And we have purpose. So your light body is very powerful and important as you connect to power. Because you're two you tectohedrons, you have the masculine above and then the um feminine we'll see if we get an image for you guys because that's always helpful or images if you're not familiar with anything i'm talking about and again if it doesn't feel right to you right now it's okay just take what you need and leave the rest so you bring in your your Merkaba into balance. It's another, it's a part of balancing your masculine and feminine energies and your connection to the earth and connection to the heavens, connection to female, connection to masculine. So it's also referred to as a star tectahedron. So this is in my sacred geometry book, page 107. Um, and this is sacred geometry oracle deck by Francine Hart. Okay, some of you may see it. And I also have an upgraded sacred geometry, which I may start pulling cards from at a later date and do a series of activations with that. So the Merkaba Boss or Tectahedron, there's an image of it. Some of you could find other images where it shows you actually the physical body within it. No, every particle and cell has a star tectahedron around it. Okay, so every cell in your being, it can oscillate. So we want to harmonize all those into harmony and balance in the body. Cellular, I mean, that's what you're feeling, oscillate as all those particulate energies. When you're invoking that violet fire and purifying your body and having energetic upgrades and you, you pause and you know you're physically not moving, but you feel your internal being moving, those of you that ever done the harmonic ache or sound baths or things like that, sometimes you can feel or have had energy work done. You can feel it moving through you. Same thing if you've gone through maybe a fall or shock or trauma and you're just in your body still vibrating, right? Because something just happens. And then your internal being is, you're feeling things shake. Okay, being altered, adjusting. So I like this article. Uh, let's see where to finish it back. It's titled, and this was in June of 2024. Or is that when I printed it? Oh, that's when I printed it. Was today. Um, the title of this article is Berkaba Meaning, Exploring Sacred Geometry and Light Energy. Um, and this was written in February of 2024 by Derek Dodds. So I know this recording is already longer than I'd like it to be, so I wanna to try to wrap some of this up. Um, but maybe you'll just listen to it as you listen to it. Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna trust those of you will just listen to it as you need to. The Merkaba, it connects you to cosmic source energy. Again, we're connecting to cosmic energy because you are cosmic energy, right? In your toroidal field, the more of you that are coming online and you're managing your energy and you're connecting into your toroidal fields, right? Because then you're going to become a, that sphere of light versus as you're harmonizing. Once you're harmonizing, then that Merkaba turns into the sphere. 
and it just oscillates and runs, right? And I, I'm simplifying some things here, okay, mm -hmm. because it's uh, there's a lot to the Mercury bus system mm -hmm. and our, our energetics, our divine structure. Mm -hmm. and, but we are sacred geometry. We're vibration and light codes only, okay? And they open up to you, but it requires the heart opening for the Mercury ball to become more active, to have the light body activation. I'm just skimming through this real quick to go, okay. So just some brief background. The Merkaba comprises the first eight cells for that fertilization. So think about the root chakra too, right? It's connecting to the root. And in um, utero, in utero, the spinal column, the nervous system is laid in and, and composed. It's one of the earliest things to go online is our communication center. So think about that with the Merkaba. And then the primary um, first eight cells at fertilization are found at the root. Okay, it's part of our communication centers. So he depicts here the Merkaba can be the meaning of it can also be referred to as the intersection of our physical and subtle energies. So the unseen energies. Right? And many of you are learning how to discern energies, the mental, the emotional, the unseen, because you can feel energies in your through the fields of your body. When described, our light body forms the basis for creating our physical and spiritual selves. Creating our physical and spiritual selves. So your light body creates your physical and spiritual self. This is important. This is how you manage your, the materialization of your physical body. The spiritual materialization of your physical body in conjunction with your light body, managing your energy. So if that interests you to learn more about the Merkaba, but more, I find importantly, not just learning about it, but experiencing and learning how to work with it, just like a... Um, just like a uh, carpenter would learn how to use his tools. You have to experience it, get a feel for it. Are you pushing too hard? Is it the right blade, right speed? Um, whatever the tool may be, if you're doing woodworking or something, right? Your Merkaba is no different. You gotta learn how to work with it, how to connect with it, how to work with life, energy, nature with it. The elements, it composes the elements as well. Again, it's sacred geometry. It's the star tetrahedron known as balance, stability, and integration. Working with your light body supports, supports your balance, stability, and integration. So those are the things you may hear me say over and over again, particularly integration and balance, stability. We had that cube energy coming in from the sun very new foundational pieces. That square energy is very stabilizing, right? If you look at pyramids, there it's a stabilizing force, square base, right? So those of you that do grid work and say you want to bring your finances back into order, stabilizing force, maybe you're going to do a pyramid component over your grid work to stabilize your finances. Okay. That actually reminds me to do good. Because you're working with the energy of the cosmos. So when you work with crystals and grids, you're working with the energy of the cosmos and they'll amplify that. Okay. So if any of you out there have more questions about grids, learning to work with them, learning to work with crystals, feel free to reach out or email me at Gina. At soulinspiredreflections.com. Happy to assist you and talk about how I can assist and coach you along the way. And if there's enough of you that inquire, I can make a class.
So as we said before, the top tetrahedron is the masculine energy and the bottom is the feminine energy. So heaven and earth, masculine, feminine, heart opening, you're in the center, okay? I'm just going to scroll through. There are certain things I wanted to touch base on in this. Didn't want to go over all of it, just some basics. Oops. So even though the uh, people describe the masculine and feminine energies as opposites, but they they appear as opposite, yet they work in harmony together, right? We, they keep the stabilization, right? They stabilize one another. So just know that when things appear to be opposite, step back a little bit and recognize, oh, wait, how are those forces actually working together? How are those opposing forces potentially working together? Because they're not necessarily opposing each other, meaning fighting against each other, right? So if you think about a bridge, you need tension and compression to create the stability for a bridge. And then there's the vertical curve and things of that nature, right? So you have opposing tensions to create strength, stability, power. We're talking about your personal power. How might you use your masculine feminine energies and harmony to create stability in your foundation and strength and your pillar of light, which is also part of the light body, part of managing your energetics? Right? and bringing in your divine consciousness, right? It supports you bringing in the divine consciousness into the physical body. So again, some of you may not have any interest in the Merkabah. Totally fine. This is happening anyway. Some of you might not have any interest in anything I'm talking about. Just know these are the things occurring regardless. With your heart's opening, you're living your life differently, you're being in the currents of your life and in the flow of the higher guidance or in, in the things that bring you light, like your passion, it lights you up, you're following that current. So just recognize it's happening for you in your unique way. By no means do you need to go down this path that I am describing. It will show up for you in the exact way it's meant to. Okay. So this gentleman describes stages of the Merkaba. And I feel this is important for those that are at kind of beginning stages of their awakening. Because I've met a few people that they're new to this awakening and they think they know it all. They think they got it. None of us know it all. And when you're telling yourself you got it, you don't. And you need to be really truthful about that and be humble in this process. Excuse me. Okay. So first stage, he, uh, this is what I liked, is that he described some of the stages. So in the beginning stages, you're learning to connect with your true self, your higher self. So doing I am meditations, this is, is not what he wrote, this is what I'm adding in. Doing I am meditations and connecting with your I am presence through meditation can be really supportive in the beginning to connect. And because at first it's going to feel foreign and you can introduce and work with the violet fire to purify your energetics. Um, those two things together are really powerful to, to use together. Um, violet flame meditations and eye meditations. And then it, then you'll start to notice physical changes in your, in your body, um, emotions and different things. When you continue to regularly put this into pra practice, you begin to feel the changes and experience experience the changes of your mental, emotional, and, and spiritual body. You can, can become lighter. You're going to learn how to use this as a tool, as your vehicle, as to how to maintain your vehicle. You're, you're learning how to maintain your being. The second stage, you may experience fatigue, disorientation in your senses. This is how he describes it. Flu-like symptoms may also persist. So this is chemicalization. This is what happens sometimes when you're integrating 
you're letting go, you're shedding stuff, your body has to catch up with the energy that just got influx. So sometimes the body, because it's more dense, the actual matter, okay, the actual material matter, um, your, your body can potentially go through um, what's called chemicalization. You can get the runs, you can get headaches, you can get what people call the energetic flu. Um, sometimes people get vertigo. You got to balance your Merkaba and then the, it helps bring that online. Okay. Sometimes Merkaba, sometimes vertigo is misdiagnosed and it's the light body needing to come into balance. Okay. And of course, take care of yourself during these times. Okay. But you remember you're using this tool and how to maintain it to, to release what's no longer serving you within the physical, mental, and emotional beings of your body, of your light body. Okay. And to be patient and at peace and really get show yourself a lot of grace during this time, especially if you're new to working with it. At the third level, you begin the ascension process, right? So for those of you new to ascension, when you start working with these things, you start working with Archangel Sandalphon and opening up your earth star chakra, that sends an energetic cosmic signal, a transmission to the higher realms, to Archangel Metatron, those that govern ascension, those light beings that help and assist with the ascension process, your soul, your I am presence, it sends that signal that that soul is ready to begin the initiatory process of ascension. Okay, and it's a very organic process. Just now, it's not woo woo. It's just you're evolving, and the people just call it ascension. Your sensitivities, your intuition, and your energy—they all become more heightened and sensitive. So you have to allow yourself to integrate and get used to basically, and your new body, the rainbow body, as in many traditions call it. Everyone refers to the rainbow body, the colors your sensitivity, that like your feeling senses, your feeling emotions, your just your heightened ability, the clairvoyancy. Some people will experience heightened clairvoyance and there's different types of clairvoyance, like clairaudience, clairsentient, also clair, like through the olfactories, claircognizant. All these things begin to come more online. So for some of you, you're experiencing that quite a bit and it's challenging to discern it. Learning to work with your light body can support you to let go of energies that are not yours so you can discern your own energy from others. And be mindful too, how far is your bubble out there? How far are you putting out your fields, right? Do you need to feel that much or do you need to bring it in a little bit so you're not taking in everybody's stuff when you haven't mastered that ability yet to make sure it doesn't stick in in your body okay this is where some people that don't realize their empaths can um they carry the weight of others the emotional weight of others and physically it shows on the body and oftentimes they're overweight or obese or unhealthy right and they don't know why and sometimes, oftentimes, it's due to the imbalance of the emotional body. Okay, and he describes stage four as the ascension process intensifying in chemical and electromagnetic changes in the brain. Absolutely. Okay. And we see this in meditation, the pineal gland. This is a way when you do these meditations, the pineal gland gets decalcified through these meditation processes. Um, but it can be an overwhelming stage. So I don't recommend people doing this alone. You want to, you really, I'd really invite you to find a mentor that can walk you, guide you through these teachings. So you have someone to reach out to when you hit these moments of overwhelm because you never know when they're going to come. So until you're able to navigate those more or less um, without the support of someone else in the beginning i find it's it's supportive to have um 
that support that's trusting. And they're not going to necessarily tell you what to do, but they're they're going to hold space for you and give you tools to support you to manage your energy. Sometimes you need to you sometimes a energy healer or someone that can assist it can help clearing your aura can come in and assist. I just had some work done for myself yesterday because something I couldn't, I needed support because something wasn't leaving and I needed a, needed some support on getting myself cleared. So we did the work together, right? She doesn't just do it for me. She gets the insight, she guides me through it, and then I do my activities. And then she is, we is, she's assisting me move the energy. Right, so uh, she, again, they're not healing me. I'm doing the work. She's just guiding me through it. There's a very much, there's a difference. Yeah. <laughs> so some of you may be noticing again, the glasses, because sometimes our vision changes. And I didn't mention this earlier, but here I'm being reminded, sometimes you can get some physical symptoms, like you can get in intense downloads of energy, you can get a lot of insightful things. Sometimes you can get blurred vision, hearing, he says hearing problems. I don't want to necessarily say hearing problems. I would say hearing can be affected. You can may hear sounds and frequencies. Um, some people actually lose their sense of smell, but then when they smell something, they know it's spirit. It's a way of communication. Okay. Um, so I've experienced all of those things. Um, and I've seen fine. And for some reason right now I'm having more of the, the vision issues, but I understand why, because I'm going through some upgrades and coming back into balance too. So at level five, it begins to uncover the mystery of the self as he puts it. So, and, and just know he's just breaking down the stages that can happen simultaneously, okay? Um, but this is a, a place of self-awareness. It's a place of self-awareness, connecting to your I am presence through Merkabah meditations and the I am. Okay. Activating your pillar of light, working with your divine spark or threefold flame of mastery of um, love, power, wisdom. Okay. Love, power, wisdom. It's pink, gold, and blue ray. The pink and blue ray make up the violet flame. Right, you're working with the violet flame to purify any energy that no longer serves you mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. And you begin to really interpret the symbolisms of dreams and your experiences in nature um, differently than you have before. You're deepening your intuition. That's what a lot of this is, uh, deepening your intuition and again, reminding you of trust. Trust. This is about you coming into your personal power and trusting you, your higher self, your guidance. Okay. Your I am presence. And I even put that above guides. There's nothing wrong with having guides. I sit here, I connect with Metatron, I connect with Sand upon different other archangels. I have other guides I connect with. Sometimes I connect with Merlin, nature guides, shamanic guides. But I go to my presence first. I go to my presence first. And that's what I'm reminding all of you right now is go to your presence first. Become God, sovereign, and free, and recognizing the oneness and whole of life. This doesn't mean you're separate or above anything. It's you stepping into these realms that exist within you, because you're not separate from the angelic realm. Right? It's an energy and frequency and ability that already exists within you, in which you're learning. 
but you're also learning to bring in your higher self and work with the elements. It's a relationship that you're not giving your power over to anything or anyone. You're reconnecting to your personal power. You're being rewired on, in every sense of the word in your communication centers, the way you've been operating, you're getting an upgrade to your system. So you're being unplugged to be replugged into yourself your higher self. It's like you got an upgrade in the gauge of the wires and cables. So information from your higher self is going to come in faster. And it'll look just as natural as I'm speaking right now and communicating. I'm not someone where people can go, oh, wow, she's totally channeling. I'm channeling as I'm speaking to you. That's how natural it can come for some of you. Sixth level. is to be feeling supported along the journey, right? So as you're also getting comfortable, right? Say you're in a class and you have a cohort and all of you are beginners. And then some are a little further along in their abilities and, and I guess holding these energies and others might need a little more support or you kind of go back and forth, right? Back and forth. Sometimes one's up, the other's down and you, you hold, you learn to hold, like in shamanism, they call the container. You hold the space for those along their journey so they can feel supported. It doesn't mean you're doing the work for them. But you're holding the space for them while they figure out and navigate. You're not interfering with their divine will or choice. You're letting them come to you. You're empowering them of their choice and to ask for assistance. No different than you asking the angelic realm for assistance. They teach you the same thing. You have the power of divine will and choice. They cannot intervene without it. And yes, are there circumstances where the angelic realm has been asked to intervene during urgent situations? Yes, that's the difference between helping and assisting. No, the way the human equivalent would be if I had an emergency call and I needed a, a like a paramedic or ambulance to come intervene. And I'm going to just clear and cancel and delete this statement. Like if I was in an accident, I need intervention, medical intervention, right? That's helping. You have to intervene. You have to act now. No, there's no time to ask. There's time to just do because it's urgent and life threatening. Versus someone trying to figure out they're kind of stumbling along. They're okay. And our natural inclination is to help. But in that helping, we took their opportunity away for them to learn and stand on their own feet. It actually caused more harm to both you and that person. Be the container and hold space and let them ask for assistance and guidance. Let them figure out their way and you hold the space for them to do so. Right? It's kind of like someone tris like learning how to kind of you show them how to do it and you guide them how to do it and then you gotta kind of take the 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 hands off the bike, so to speak. When you're learning to ride a bike, first you hold the bike. Or maybe there's training wheels first, then your dad or mom's holding the bike behind you, still training wheels. Then you take the training wheels off and your mom or dad's holding the seat of the bike behind you. And then eventually they just let go and you're on your own. You might be wobbling, you don't realize it. And then, ah, you're, you're good. You're good. And then you build that confidence like, oh my gosh, I can do this. And there you are just going off bike ramps before you know it. Fun. That 
is part of the awakening process and then it, life gets more and more fun even with the challenges at least that's how i've experienced it the seventh level of the light body is activating that coincides with the opening of the heart chakra I don't necessarily agree with him putting this at the seventh level, but again, he's just putting it in a structure of stages that we can understand in kind of in a linear way. These things all happen simultaneously, okay? And just trust your presence is going to continue to open your heart each time, each time, a little bit more, a little bit more, okay? Because <clears throat> a heart must open to ascend for this process to occur. It's playful, it's joy, it's, it taps into your childlike qualities, your, your child, your inner child, which goes into the octahedron energy as well. Um, it's a lot of growth. The pituitary and pineal glands really begin to grow and expand and decalcify. Um, sometimes you might feel pressure in the back of the head or in, in the head as these are expanding. It can be uncomfortable, but then you expand and it softens right you can actually have like energetic weights like my pants would get tight from time to time and then all of a sudden the expansion would occur and then all of a sudden my clothes fit fine again okay um the ninth stage of sensitivity the sacred geometry increases meaning the merkaba and the sacred geometry actually within your body and your cells and particles um the spirit is beginning to communicate with you more you're, you're coming online and more comfortable with your multidimensional being and the multifaceted of, uh, of your diamond hearts, of your third eye center, um, right? Because we're, we're not just one, it's all units working together. Um, like today, yeah, I was just thinking like I woke up today feeling a lot taller after having some work done yesterday. And he even said in this next line, you can feel taller or shorter or something like you can feel this dimensional things in your body. It's really quite interesting. And um, and like the soul expands, right? The, your presence and just like we were once giants, right? Um, and you you begin to really start to practice and put into practice your abilities as a, as a light worker, a being of light and working with these energies and and of the body and how energy moves across systems, across time and space and, and to bring it into form, right? Um, and then the, the body is transforming, okay? The, you are transforming your body on a cellular and a molecular level. You are coming into renewal um, in the circulatory system, really every system of your body is upgrading your the circulatory system reminds me of the blood, the water that runs through you, especially working with the heart energy. It's highly emotional body. Okay. Tied very much into the water elements. Um, and I'm even hearing talk about the spleen a little bit, the spleen, the Christ energy. This is like the water, right? The water, the blood purifying yourself okay you're you're one with source the it's also the bloodline you're purifying your ancestry you're purifying your lineage you're coming back into the ancient wisdom as we see in the, the crone here the ancient wisdom of creation life the mother the earth heavens because there's wings around her right there's wings there's wings around her it looks like hair right you're bringing heaven into earth through the body and then i'll give a link to this article and he does give a merkaba meditation or activation that i haven't read through and but you can use your own discernment whether or not you choose to use that. And let's see where we are now, because this is a very long video, um, but I wanted to get into the cube symbolism. So maybe you're just going to watch this and pause it and continue watching it on your own. Um, but it feels important to talk about some of these things. So this article on the cube is a little more 
um, I will say has more religious overtones than what I'm accustomed to. Um, but there seems to be a lot of purpose in this article. So I didn't want to let my own personal discomfort stray me away. From reading excerpts from it, and I'm just trusting that I'm going to be guided to extrapolate what is necessary for you and to interpret what is necessary for you and those of us that are coming across this information at this time and let go of any contraction you may have to any religious references um, as I also had to do partly because I'm not well versed in religion it wasn't a, it wasn't really my path to study religion it didn't at the time I was going to church I was baptized Catholic and then went to an evangelical church for a while it just didn't feel right I just felt very uh, the way the information was delivered didn't make sense to me so um I my dad one day if it makes you that unhappy to go maybe you shouldn't go and I said thank you and I I just never went back <laughs> so um I realized God is wherever I am and and that's been true ever since and uh and now when I connect with God, he's in everything. It's in nature, he's in me, he's in you, it's in all my, everything. Everything that's around me, it's, it's a reflection of God. So the cube, this is an article by Bruce Johnson written in 2011. And let me copy this link down so I don't lose it. And I will also put this link for your reference in the description. So you have it, you can read it on your own. Again, take what you will. So cube or hexahedron, okay? Because it's a square with, right? It's a square, but it's a cube. So it's um, that six-sided um, of equal size. Oh yes, here they reference the New Jerusalem. Now, multiple times now, I've been up to Mount Shasta and the gentleman that I will go to sacred spots on the mountain with, but in the name of Paul, the Venetian, he does spiritual tours along the mountain. He's wonderful. I've actually watched him grow over the years when he first started out, which is about the time I was going through my one of my awakenings and really stepped into this path of work um, over 10 years ago. And, um, and transformational work. So we've watched each other grow in beautiful ways in the new jerusalem in mount shasta there's a region in mount shasta um but it's not at exact location of the mountain and i've never asked him exactly where it was but he's hiked over to that region of the, in that area and refers to it as the new jerusalem it's about the third time i'm now seeing it and hearing it from a different source so if that means something to some of you out there in the energies, let's focus on the energy of what that might mean. Okay, what that might mean. So in this article, it says the new Jerusalem that allegorically descends from heaven in the book of Revelation is a cube of approximately 1400 miles in length, width and height. Okay. Alexander Quinn mentioned cube energy coming from the sun in one of his posts a few days ago in conjunction with the solstice. I took a picture of the sun, which appeared to me as an octahedron. It may have well been a dodecahedron, but initially I felt like it's octahedron. So we're dealing with all these sacred geometry and templates and codes of energy coming in to the planet. So that too means that is being activated within you and what that might mean for you as you too are ascending with the planet. Okay, so the cube energy. That would, I would invite you on your own. I'm not going into this today because it's, this video is already very long. The um, book of Revelation is a cube, right? Go reference that on your own. 
share in the comments what you discovered, right? Because we all support each other. Maybe it'll shed some insight and inspiration. When we have dialogue, dialogue, and aren't afraid of hearing different opinions. We're not here to try to exert power over each other. We're not here to, well, say our agreements or disagreements. We're just here to share our thoughts in a neutral place. Here's what comes to mind when I'm referring to this. Don't know if it quite fits. I don't know, but you know for yourself, okay? Because you're sovereign. So if you do share, keep it neutral in language and anything that is not in resonance with what I want at space I want to hold, I'm just going to delete it or I'll turn off comments because I don't have the energy to basically, I, I would say lack of better word, parent people's behavior. Okay, so this is part of your own self-mastery is to be able to discern if you should post something in the way it should be posted and use the highest form of language available to you. Be thoughtful and purposeful in it. Okay, so the New Jerusalem, okay. Islam's holy mosque in Mecca contains the Kaaba, which is based on the double cube. I don't know anything really about these regions in the way the mosque is designed. So if someone out there knows and you feel like sharing your knowledge on this, please do so. Um, I may or may not look it up at this time. I don't know. Esoterically, the cube is a symbol of the regenerated and perfected soul living in a state of permanence. Esoterically, the cube is a symbol of the regenerated and perfected soul living in a state of permanence. Sit with that for a second. Symbol of the regenerated and perfected soul. That's part of where I had some new insight, the solar flares and understanding what that was meaning. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh my gosh, it's an influx of my I am presence coming into my body. It's an influx of the I am presence of the planet coming into her body. It's an influx of the cosmic I am coming into the body. Solar flares. the symbol of the cube and solar flares coming from the sun. The ancients often symbolized the logical, rational mind of man, of man as a cube in contrast to the spirit. And I'm just going to pause there for a second because cube in the platonic solids references the earth. Corresponds with the earth. Our body is the earth form, earth element. The ancients have symbolized the logical, rational mind of man as a cube. In contrast, the spirit signified by a sphere. The cube is one of the five perfect solids of, here we go, Plato or Pythagoras, along with the tetrahedron, octahedron, acosahedron, and dodecahedron. Okay, because these correspond with the elements, right? Water, air, earth, Fire, spirit, cosmos. It corresponds to the number four. Okay, remember a square is foundational pieces. We're moving into the eight, the number eight. Okay, some of us are moving into eight, the energy of eight. It corresponds to the number four, the body and the earth element and a symbolic, symbolic of matter. Okay, remember I talked about four being stability matter solid we're coming into the truth of our eternal being and changing our essence our core like gold it's unchanged cubes the symbolism is also found in the tarot contained in the emperor the chariot and justice cards the devil card displays half a cube representing imperfection imbalance excessive materialism 
This is what is being corrected or part of all that, I'll say, luciferic energy or misqualified energy, all that template that was held us all in fear and control and misuse of power is being dismantled and no longer has, no longer can take control of anyone anymore. We are being liberated into this higher temples. Okay, coming back again into balance. Okay, infinity, balance, symmetry, harmony, masculine and feminine energies and ways we engage with material and matter and form and resources. The cube was frequently used as a pattern in ancient times for many types of buildings, including temples of all kinds. It was often the foundation of the stone of stone. It was also the foundation stone of the structure. The six faces of the cube, when unfolded, form a Latin cross. Numerous altars and temples around the world were based on the cube and or Latin cross. Okay, because remember, it's foundation, stability, including the famous Temple of Solomon. Okay, I'm not going to go look that up. You look that up on your own. The crystal system, this is important. Okay. The crystal system of different elements, minerals, and gems are not surprisingly, gems are not surprisingly built on the cube. How light, how light, salt, fluorite, pyrite, garnet, lapis, lazuli, spinel, and diamond are all based on the cubic crystal system. Okay cubic crystal system. Isometric. The crystal system where the unit cell is the shape of a cube. We can go more into the aspects of crystals and different structures at a later time. Many of the metals with the densest specific gravity are based on the cube, right? Matter, stability, solidarity, truth. It's unchanging, it's eternal. You're coming into your permanence. Your I am presence is coming in to the body. Your true essence is coming into the body, into matter. Many of the metals where the densest specificity gravity are based on the cube. This group includes copper, silver, gold, platinum, and lead. And what do we use for amplification? Copper. What do we use to conduct? Copper, gold, platinum, all these things, silver. What do we use to in our energetic body? Platinum ray. Silver cord, connecting to power, bringing in your golden light. Copper, reminding me of this bronzy color as depicted with sound upon connecting to the earth. These ore metals. Okay. So that's where we leave us today is to pay attention to these things, the cosmos, your I am presence coming in, your cosmic I am presence, connecting to the cosmos, the I am presence coming into the physical body. So you're moving from the four to the eight energy, okay, stability, and into the eight energy is more balanced and, and the way it moves, energy is moving. Doesn't mean you're not going to have structure and truth, but you're coming into some other 
permanence and solidarity, balance and symmetry with that eight energy. And don't forget, if you need to practice being in that energy of four, do that. Again, there's no rush to be anywhere. It's going to naturally go in its divine way for you, your divine growth and your own. Um, and I think that's where we leave it. Pay attention to what you're consuming and to be in balance and symmetry and aware and discerning of your own being. If you have questions about any of the topics I've mentioned today, like your light body, your Merkaba, crystals, crystal formation, please reach out. I'm happy to do maybe a smaller video on some of these things. Um, start a conversation here in particularly, this was kind of long today, but things are going to be ramping up and it's important for you to have your stability, to be in the truth of what is, to be more connected to your intuition and your divinity and, and personal power and get used to what that feels like. Um, as you step into that world, it is not um, an easy transition for many people. Um, you know, especially those of us that have been shedding our old ways and had come in with more karmic debris than newer generations coming in that are very, very um, clear of the, I'll say, they're not crusted over like people of my generation are and were and, and, and whatnot. I'm Gina Albedo, Soul Inspired Reflections. Be sure to like and share this video if you find it supportive. Much love to all of you. And until next time, um, I will see you next time. So I'll leave you with this. Take self-care. Go for walks out in nature. It really, really does rejuvenate you. And for me, it just calms my soul and livens me up and brings peace to my body and my heart. And it just feels good. So that is one simple way to help manage your energy and even digest some of what we talked about today. <laughs> All right. Much love to you.